In this episode, we're going to discuss a personality test that I completed, the Colby A test. What is the Colby A test? Well, first of all, it's a test that was created by a lady called Kathy Colby. And this test is designed to figure out what your cognitive skills are. We have three different parts of the brain. We have the cognitive, we have the uh, sort of affective, and then we have the uh, cognitive. The cognitive part of the brain obviously is the IQ and our experiences. The affective part of the brain is our emotions and our feelings. And then the cognitive part of the brain is how we instinctually do something. Now that's a very light and high level overview of three parts of the brain. I'm not gonna dive too deep into the different science, but the Colby test is designed to focus on the cognitive part of your personality. What do you naturally do in a number of different situations? What do you fall on? It doesn't matter what your IQ is. It doesn't matter how you're feeling or your emotional state. It's really about what is your instinctual reaction to a situation. You could call your MO, your modi operandium or your modi operandi whatever way you want to use it, mode of operation, MO, that's what Kathy Colby and the Colby test is really trying to figure out. On the screen now, you will see my 5573 Colby results. And before diving deeper into my results and what the Colby has done for me, let's actually talk about the overreaching structure of the Colby test. There are four key areas, fact finder, follow through, quick start and implementer. Each of those areas are scored between 1 and 10. And it doesn't matter whether you're a 1 or a 10, it is a benefit to you. That's what I love about the Colby test, is wherever you land on the test within each of those four categories, it is a benefit to you. Each of those four categories have three different results you can fall into. If you score between 1 and 3, 4 and 6, and 7 and 10, you are in a slightly different category in each of those four areas. If you score between 1 and 3, you are a problem finder. You find problems in those areas. If you score between four and six, you are very accommodating and you find solutions. If you score between seven and 10, you're very insistent in that area. You're also somebody who initiates those solutions. Okay, so the five categories. Let's look at the first one, fact finder. Basically, this is how you gather your information. If you are scored low in fact finder, you're Type of, your type of somebody, the type of person, sorry, that just likes to simplify things and you want a small amount of information. If you are high in fact finder, you want very, very specific information. You can see on the screen there that I actually score a five on this, so I'm in the middle, I'm a bit of a bridge between the two. Also, the next category, follow through. Very, I actually put these two categories quite close together. I don't know whether Kathy Colby would, but I actually kind of see these two kind of hand in hand because the second one, follow through, is how you arrange that information, how you arrange the data. If you score low on follow through, you're more an adaptive person. You like to adapt a lot. You don't need a lot of information. You can work off the fly. Also, if, if you're high in follow through, you're sort of very systematic, systems thinking, I wouldn't want to say bureaucratic because that's can almost be seen as negative, but you'd be someone, someone in IT, let's say, or somebody who's very into data would obviously need that skill because they're very detail oriented and need a lot of information. The next one is quick start. And that really leans on how comfortable you are with risk. And this is actually my largest area the largest or the, the one I score the highest on, which means that I am a little bit more open to risk. If you score low on this area, you enjoy working within stable environments, you like those stable structures, you're a stabilizer. If you score high on the quick start, you are an improviser, an innovator, and organizations need both those people. That's just a fact. That's just, one isn't better than the other. They both need to coexist in the same world. And I think that's for all four of these categories, you need that balance on both sides of the scale for an organization or teamwork or a project to really do well. The final one is implementer. This is a, a, an important one as well. It's how you do your work, how you think about your work and how you do your work. Somebody who scores low in implementer is very um, 
cognitive in the sense that they're very imagine they're in their imagination they figure things out with their mind and somebody who is high in this would use their hands a lot for instance artists builders surgeons people who need to be very very technical with their hands would be high would score high in this i score lower in this one and i definitely definitely think that that is me i'm more of a more of a person who uses the, her, the, their mind to think through situations. So there you go. There is an overview of the structure. Score out of 1 to 10, three categories, 1 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 10, in each of the four areas of fact finder, follow through, quick start, and implementer. I hope you're still with me. Because this is where I'm now going to st start to talk about how Colby has worked for me. My Colby results really shone a light for me on, on what I'm good at and where I enjoy to work. Before doing my Colby test, I kind of knew these things intuitively, but I didn't really have a system or personality test that actually said back to me, here, this is actually what you're good at. And it made a lot of sense to me. If I go through each of the four categories, the first one uh, being fact finder, I do need a decent amount of information, but I don't need all the information. I don't just want a little bit of information because I want to make sure that what I'm saying and what I'm doing and what maybe instructions that I'm giving are actually right. I, I am a, a bridge between the two. I also do find that if I am dealing with very technical people and I'm also dealing with people that don't want a lot of information, I can communicate to both sides of the spectrum. That is the same for uh, the next one, which is follow through. I definitely think, again, I, I'm not somebody who can just not care about how I, um, how I process my data or how I keep my data. Also, I don't think that I'm super adaptive where I can just work off the fly. I do need to have my information set out in a way that is easy for me to sort of navigate, get to and use, but I'm not super into the whole data. I don't need to have months and months and months of analysis to maybe make a decision. I can make a decision quite quickly with a little bit of analysis. And again, within the organizations I've worked for in these first two categories, I definitely feel like I've been a bridge between data heavy and information heavy, uh, people who need a lot of specific information and people that really need that information set out in a deep way. And those people that don't, I, I do also feel like in my career with these two categories, I, I've been able to come up with processes or come up with cheat sheets or quick start kind of uh, guides to help people navigate a lot of heavy information. And, and I do think it's a little bit of a talent of mine. So I, I, when I got my Colby results back, these two areas really made me feel kind of like, wow, I, I actually do feel like that is me. Then the next category, quick start, which is my highest scoring one. I do have aspirations of being an entrepreneur, and this is what you, some people may argue when doing a bit of research in the Colby. A lot of entrepreneurs score highly in this one, but I also find entrepreneurs maybe score lowly or on the lower side on uh, the second category there, uh, follow through, because they, they adapt a bit more, but I maybe don't adapt as quickly as I could because I, I, I like to have a little bit more information. But on the other hand, having that quick start being more on the innovation side of things rather than the stabilization side of things within this specific category, I do like to come up with solutions and come up with processes, you know, with that heavy data and that heavy information like we just discussed in the first two categories. I like to come up with ideas and I like to spearhead those ideas and I like to be in it, uh, in innovative within the structures that I work in. And again, the Colby kind of nailed it. And I was like, wow, this is this does speak to me. This is this is who I am. I do like to come up with projects and I do like to come up with ideas. And I do like to push back a little bit on the structure and the culture within the organizations I work for. And then finally, the fourth one, which is Implementor. This one really, really speaks to me. I Even though I describe myself as a fairly handy guy, you know, if someone asked me, hey, Steve, removing some stuff, uh, we need, need to give you a hand to carry some sofas or you know, help do a bit of DIY. I would think that I'm handy enough that I am talented enough to support somebody and not be a liability. However, I don't get any enjoyment out of building things. I don't get any enjoyment out of arts and crafts. I'm not very technical with like, I wouldn't be very good at building model aeroplanes. I'm not very good at my hands. I'm a bit clumsy. Also, I don't have the patience for it. But 
On the flip side of that, I can spend hours alone on my own in my mind. I can meditate. I can think through ideas. Um, I, I'm not a big journaler, but I do have journals which help me uh, mind map and, and write things out and think about things. But I definitely, when I come up against a problem, the first place I go to and the best place for me to go to is my mind. I, I do think that I have the ability to look at complex situations in my mind and work through solutions where I don't really need to actually tangibly feel things or build something with my hand or build a, a system or do coding or whatever that is to pr create a, a, a product or create a, a system for me to actually work through, like create a, 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 like a, an overreaching structure to my, to my life. I'm a little bit more conceptual uh, with that. With that said, I do think that Colby has allowed me to feel a little bit more comfortable saying no to certain roles and jobs. I know that I shouldn't be really very, very technical. And I know that I shouldn't really work within uh, a very uh, structured, stable, processed um, job. I also don't think that I would, uh, if someone asked me to do a very data heavy uh, project where I had to do a lot of really deep analysis, I know that's not going to be me because th that's not something that I'm very good at. Uh, and if I have to be really drilled down specific on the things, I, I wouldn't get enjoyment out of really diving that deep. Now, I do enjoy reading. I do enjoy getting into new subjects. I like learning things. I like picking up a couple of books on marketing or behavioral economics or business uh, structures or systems thinking or spiral dynamics. And I like touching those areas and I like getting enough information that I can grasp that subject but i don't ever really dive deeply into that and i think that's where, where in my work life the colby test has actually allowed me to notice that, that if i'm asked to do a very data heavy project i might say that's not my speciality i might need some technical support with this however before doing my colby test i might have given it a go and got really really frustrated and thought why am i getting frustrated with this but i guess to wrap up this video, uh, I would highly recommend doing a Colby test. I think personality tests are great. I've done the Strength Finders and Meyer Briggs and other tests like that, and I will discuss those in future videos. And uh, but to really wrap up this with Colby, I think what it really did for me in a, in a cognitive, in a modus operandi or uh, mo kind of framing, it allowed me to actually understand the things that I intuitively intuitively kind of already did. I kind of already understood that I didn't need a lot of information. I kind of already understood that I, I don't need all my information really systemized and sorted out, I, I, but I need it a little bit. I kind of already understood that I like being in a, innovative and I, I work on the fly and I like just to do things uh, spontaneously and, and I like to have the freedom to do that within my, within my work structures. And I also knew that intuitively that I'm more of a conceptual thinker. I'm not really a builder. I'm not really into using my hands, but I'd never really done a personality test that was like, boom, here you go. If you like this video, uh, hit that button for me. And also if you want to see more videos like this, where I discuss personality tests or I talk about stoicism sometimes, and other bits of philosophy, I talk about marketing and business and just general ideas that are helping me push forward in my life to hopefully get to the next level of success. My mission here is to deliver bite-sized videos each week that can hopefully help people get to that next level. So hit that subscribe button if that sounds like something you'd be interested in following along with. Let me know in the comments below, have you ever done a Colby test? Have you done any other type of personality test? Is there one out there besides Myers-Briggs and Strength Finders and Colby that I should really give a go? And if I think it's useful, I'll give it a go and I'll do a video about it because I'm going to do a video about the other... Uh, personality tests that I've already done in my life. Thanks very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Make it a good one.